All right, today we're going to explore AR and VR in the metaverse and the companies that are actually starting to help make this a reality. No pun intended. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to TechPath. Today we're going to dive into a partner overview project uh, video, which is on Over, a company called Over. We've actually had OVR in my portfolio. If you guys have not checked out one of my high-risk portfolios that I put in, mainly around the aspect of a lot of emerging projects. We put over in that list uh, several weeks ago, the token absolutely exploded and we had some great performance on that one. Recently I sold that, sold that token in my uh, list. And I wanna talk a little bit about not only what they're doing, but also how this could affect the AR VR space when it comes to metaverse gaming. So we'll get into this a little bit about their project. OVR is trading right here on the three month. If you kind of look at where this came from back here again, Metaverse Day, which was the end of October. Uh, we put this in our, I think our portfolio in early November. And then of course it had a nice rise. It took a little bit of a dip right here. And then of course it just absolutely exploded onto the scene and became one of the popular tokens even on uh, token metrics. If you guys have not seen the way we use token metrics, it's one of our partners, but we use it as identifying emerging projects and it had identified over as one of the emerging projects in their TM grade, which was one of the reasons, again, we were uh, jumping into the projects itself. So they reached out to us, said, hey, take a little deeper dive in this. Tell us what you think about the project itself. And that's what we're gonna do. So um, one, Super investment, if you were in in October and you're still holding this project, kudos to you, you have absolutely killed it. And I think the key here is when you look at growth in projects like this, especially in the AR VR space, you've got to look at not only the token aspect of it, but also what the overall mission of these projects are. Because And everybody kind of looks at these, and I know you guys follow the rules uh, when we do these market movers. Pretty simple, we'll, we'll pull together some data, we'll get some, uh, some news elements in here, and then we'll pull some data to help you guys kind of make a decision on how you're gonna be moving forward, whether it's, um, you know, kind of from a research aspect, obviously not investment advice. I wanna jump over to their, um, their About, which is a platform that's geolocalized AR and VR experiences based on Ethereum. It also allows for creating hosting and visualizing on mobile geolocated AR VR content. Now, what this simply means is as we look at games and also retail applications, all sorts of metaverse tool sets that are going to be developed over the years coming, there's going to be a baseline of companies and projects like OVR that are essentially going to be moving in that direction to provide kind of the baseline technology that helps a lot of this take place. The if you look at, this is interesting, the world has been divided into 1.6 trillion hexagons, each of those nominated with a combination of three English words, hexagon, overland, which is one of their land plays on it, represents a geographic location, and the owner of overland can decide what AR, VR experience will be visualized in the location itself. So again, building aspects, uh, we see this a lot in Sandbox and what kind of the evolution is, of ha is happening within their play on the metaverse. And I think when you look at the overall space of what's happening in AR, VR, one of the things that I always follow, especially when you're investing in any of these projects, is take a look at the underlying technology and where the growth is coming. Here was a recent report just here this week. Allied Market Research published a latest report titled AR, VR Chip Market by Chip Type. The reason this is important is because of the type of displays that are gonna be utilized in eventually bridging that gap between what projects like OVR are doing, OVR, and what the metaverse are going to essentially do and the equipment that's gonna be needed to kind of play in between these two. Major players profiled in the report, uh, chip market were Qualcomm, everybody knows that. NVIDIA, we've already talked about that many times about how uh, important they are. Imagination Tech, MediaTek, Intel, of course, Spectra 7, and then advanced micro devices, which that one surprised me a little bit. And then of course, IBM, Samsung, and Huawei tech. Why is this important? The key here is, again, the technology that is going to take and create, whether it's glasses, headsets, interfaces. If you watch the, you know, the movie Ready Player One, 
All those kinds of elements in terms of interface capacity is going to be interesting, especially when we jump to the metaverse, because that's where I think a lot of people are going to be looking at growth in terms of crypto projects, because you've got play to earn, play and earn, and then you've got all these elements around AR and VR playing into this whole capacity of where metaverse is going. And you guys love this project or these projects like this because it is in many cases the fast growth tokens that are on the move right now at least when it comes uh, to the metaverse. I want to jump over to their uh, to their website. So they've got a marketplace uh, aspect to it which is essentially kind of that whole this is where I think the retail capacity could start to play into what OVR is going to play uh, in terms of a role in the future because I think retail will eventually move quickly into the metaverse and we'll start to see e-commerce, things like that, really starting to play into it. But if you look at their team, this is an interesting aspect of it because this is always something that I'm concerned with in terms of how is the team put together, who are the team, and what do they mean to kind of how the evolution of that is going. So you've got uh, David, this is an Italian group. Uh, You've got Diego and then uh, Mattia. Uh, But most of these team members are very versed already in not only the technology space, but how a lot of this conversion in the retail technology is going to take place. So I think the fact that these are fully doxed and also fully available to get to, I think this is a very important aspect of any project that you're going to be getting into it. Some other things that they've released here recently is some new elements. Um, This is kind of just their... Their blurb on anyone with a mobile smart device able to have an interactive augmented reality experience tailored to your current GPS. This, I think we're going to see, this technology, I think we're going to see this in the next few years really take hold in our society, much like mobile phones did in the mid-2000s. And I think a lot of people didn't think the touchscreen was going to become the new interface, and now you kind of know where that is right now. So you've got a lot happening there with that but one of the things that they did do in, back in May they had a one-off burn of over a million over tokens to celebrate the first six months since their launch and then now they're doing a 40 percent will be used for direct token burn and another 10 percent will incentivize the overland sales with a money, monthly extraction among new overland buyers and also using the chain, chain link VRF so all of this simply means is that this has good token token economics. And if you look at the team, you look at the project, and then the market space itself from an AR, VR standpoint, now you're starting to get into those magical scenarios. It's kind of like games. When we look at really great games, the typical scenario is if you're not just chase, chasing you know, market moves, meaning the token pops, you run it, you don't have any belief in what the, the project might hold, but versus when you go into projects like Sandbox or Mana or some of the big guys like Axie, et cetera, and projects like Over where you may say, listen, if I'm going to bet on an AR VR play, what would that be? And maybe I have a portfolio that I'm looking at building into AR and VR. And Over, as I've kind of already you know, given it as an example, is I have put it into my portfolio completely without them asking me to. And the idea was just to see how AR and VR would perform absolutely killed it. And I think in the future, we're going to continue to see these kinds of gains on AR and VR. Remember, very early right now, just like NFT gaming aspects, we we see a lot of breakthrough. I think we're going to see a little bit more activity in the AR VR space in the coming months, and especially in 2022, and start to see that breakdown. My big question here is how Meta, meaning Facebook, Uh, and a lot of the bigger players will start to interface in that and how those partnerships might actually play to something like an OVR tokens uh, strengths in terms of mainstreaming how AR and VR start to really become something for crypto, play to earn, play and earn, and then maybe the next layer is going to be e-commerce, and then of course we'll see the last component in the metaverse, which is going to be work. All of those functions outside of gaming, which I think will still be one of the biggest categories in terms of how Metaverse will be constructed over the next few years. But all of those functions are going to need visual interfaces, augmented reality interfaces. And I think when you look at both the technology and the projects behind them, 
those are the ones you need to be watching, of course, all the time. We're going to continue to cover more projects like this to dive in a little deeper on how not only how the projects affect blockchain and what parts of blockchain could they affect, but also really trying to tie this together. It's very similar to a video we just did with Sandbox, Unity, and Polygon and why that magical trifecta means so much. So that's the idea of when we do these market movers, that's the idea is to try to get those to you uh, in that format. All right, you guys are listening in over on the podcast right now. Best thing to do is subscribe right here on the YouTube channel. And also, you know, just hit a like on the video. That is one way that it helps the YouTube algorithm understand that you like content coming from our channel. And if you like more projects for us to drive in, dive into a little bit deeper, drop them in the comments below because I read all those comments. We get our team internally. We kind of digest those. We get a lot of them coming in. But if you have one that you think is really uh, important and interesting, we would love to hear about it. Of course, you can always do that also on Twitter. Just hit me up at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.